OK, there we go. Um, and eco schools are sort of are doing more to support local authorities getting schools involved. So they're, they're looking to local authorities a way of, of us being a sort of supporting element to what you're, the work you're doing. And the climate emergency agenda seems to be the way that a lot of local authorities are giving this work a boost. One of the seven steps, this is step four, is about eco schools and lessons. And I know that this is like it's important for the eco schools organisation and it's really important from the, sort of the council climate action perspective that this is something that all schools try to work on. Um, but I know it can be a bit more of a struggle because particularly in secondary schools, but I think because there's a lot less flexibility, but also in primary. Um, because it's see it's like often a lunchtime club or a, a project um, after school club and they want to make sure that actually what's happening in that club is filtering through to all the students throughout the school. So one of the things we'll do in the second half of the session, have a think about how we use some of those topics, the eco schools topics in lessons and, and some lesson ideas and what would suit your school of ways of helping students kind of either the eco team communicating to other students or even like running their own lessons or ways that they're going to get other students involved. Um, again, I think Laura's got some ideas for this. Um, so on the website, there's this handy timetable which has their suggested schedule for running these different steps. Um, so we're in February already, um, but they do say if you start by kind of spring half term, you should be able to complete it, but it's a bit it's a bit more of a squash. What I'm saying to a lot of schools that are really just on the first sort of step into this at the moment is use this academic year to get set up, work out how the scheme works, and then next year you can run it properly and fully to get the green flag. Um, but an important element is that the green flag application uh, schools have to pay £200 for. Um, and that's sort of to get to get your flag to sort of say you've officially finished because the team will assess the work you've uploaded. Um, but we'll be uh, we'll be paying for this green flag fee for schools for at least the next two years. Um, unfortunately, this year schools are going to have to pay when they register for the sort of flag application. Um, so all the schools I know are doing this. I'll make sure they know the invoice codes so they can invoice the council for that 200 pounds hopefully by next year we'll actually be able to buy a head and like pay for all the schools that are, are taking part and then you just have a code to put in but i don't think we're going to be able to get that up and running for this year um so just to get our brains into the topics a little bit um I don't know. I, it sounds like you're all familiar with the website, but I'm just going to paste the link to the Eco Schools website so you can have a look at the 10 topics. And I'd just like you to take a moment to think which of these 10 topics, if we were going to sort of take action on them, which could be most relevant for climate change or reducing climate change? So pop it in the chat which you think might be most closely linked or you can say it out loud and only a small group
It's, um, I'd probably go with um, energy or trust. Energy, what was the other one? Uh, transport. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Cool. Well, yeah, uh, Alexander's on school grounds. I think that very, yeah, very much depends on how the angle you take with things like school grounds and conservation. I mean, I asked this question because when you were the sort of the big push around eco schools is coming through the, the council's sort of aim to make sure that education is a big part of the climate emergency response. And we're saying, yes, we need to count carbon emission reductions, but we need to think about sort of longer term future impacts and sort of positive change. But we look at the eco schools topics in terms of where we can actually save carbon emissions and make a difference to sort of what I call like hard climate change. So I want the, the stuff you can count um, around carbon, particularly and greenhouse gases, as opposed to the sort of the social side of climate change. Um, and this is obviously this is relatively old data now, that's 16, 17 years old, but percentages won't have shifted a huge amount. I think the buildings one has come down a bit because energy efficiency is generally improved, but and procurement includes food. Um, so you can see that actually sort of food and other stuff used at school is quite a high proportion of carbon emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and the, the um, buildings which covers energy it's quite a high proportion as well. Um, so yes, yeah, sort of looking at the energy topics, the energy, the topic of energy, if students can engage with um, estates management or school business managers to look at energy bills and energy usage around the school. Um, I know schools that have done that and actually saved quite large amounts of money, as well as kind of you can sort of see the quantifiable saving in greenhouse gas emissions. But we know that for primary schools, it tends to be like transport, litter, um, the waste ones are a bit more accessible. It feels like you can see a difference by doing those activities. And, and I always like recommend biodiversity in school grounds because that's got so much like the, the positivity from well-being and health side of things as well. You can see actually in reality, waste and litter are very small sort of contributor on the if we're looking at it from a climate change point of view. Cool. I'm going to leave that bit there. Are there any questions so far? Let Laura speak. Cool. Um, Laura, do you want to um, present and go through the the eco school steps or shall i present for you yeah you can present because i see my can't oh. let's go there i've got i've got your thing open so That's the one. Laura, can okay, can everyone see that now? The Eco Schools O L O L S G. Yeah. Okay. This is um, our school is our lady in San George. It is, um, I don't know if it's anybody familiar, but nearly um, one side is nearly Holy Family in Shellhorn Street, and the other side is nearly um, the church. I don't know how to explain that. Addison Road and Shellhorn Street is the other side. Okay, 
We have been involved for a long time doing that, more than 10 years, really, we, we, when I started with the Eco Council. We actually started with be, be, very, very little, and we keep moving on. Um, we become with Eco School, we enroll with them, and we are starting to follow the Eco School theme that they have. So, I mean, the first step that to become an eco school you need to do is you need to have an eco committee. The eco committee is chosen by the children in the class. They need to vote a name for the children. It's at least one student per class, but always better to have two because if one is not there, you always have the other one who is in the class. The Eco Council should be meet at least once each term. It's a more the meeting is better because it get more active by everyone. Uh, in the Eco Committee, if the first time you apply, you don't need everything, but after the year, you, you need to have a governor involved with you and parents if possible. Always it's important that the senior manager team or the head teacher is involved somehow also with the Eco Council because if they are involved, you will be lucky that you will be supported and for what needs to be done with the school. And it disappeared. <laughs> okay. I have here in another computer, Poppy, is that okay? Uh, able, uh, it's come back now. Okay. Uh, the next thing is when you have um when you have your eco council form, you need to get a board in the school that where you need to display the eco board is called, and you will have in there the picture of the children who are the eco council for the school. The the, the same thing you can have that also online, I guess now too, for the to show them. But the board is a must. You must have a board that you inform to the whole school about what you are doing in the eco council. The 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 children who run the eco council are the one really who should be running the the meeting. Of course, you agree with them and the thing you will do that day or what you want to address, and the children will speak themselves what it is. You need to have also some person who is the chair of the meeting who will take the notes. Because um, I have been inspect in the school, that I means one of the, the person came into the school to assess us, and they do a lot of questions to the children. Um, I know at the moment it's online because of the um, virus, the coronavirus, but it doesn't mean it won't come back again to be in a school to assess. Um, they ask a lot of questions to the children about, you know, how the meeting is run and, and all of, of mm. the stuff. Sorry, I'll just interrupt. I'm, I, yeah. I think they've decided to completely shift online now. And they won't okay. be doing school assessments. Yeah. Oh, okay. Last year, when I spoke to them, they, they say they were going doing online uh, online because of the viral. Maybe that is a good idea. They don't come for different reasons. Yeah. Can we move to the next one, Poppy, please? Okay. Uh, after you had the eco council, you organize the children and so on and on. We in our school have the children who are in the eco council are from reception to year six. Each class has two children, and all of them have come into the meeting. The reception children also they do come. Okay, you need to do an environmental review which is, I, I guess, the template is still in eco school. You can download from there. And need to be um, complete by the student and, uh, and an adult. I mean, what you do is usually you go around the school, you check, for example, the grounds, uh, you know, what if the ground needs uh, attention or doesn't need attention, water in the school, if you have any leak in the school, is any rubbish around the school? Is any wasted paper? Is any wasted energy? 
is food waste at lunchtime, also the children can monitor that. Um, what more you, uh, what more that we look into? Yeah, in general, you look everything in the school. When you finish with the environmental review that they will take the step you do in there, you need to display this in the, in the eco board or online. The most important thing is the children decide what is the action. Of course, you will speak to them and encourage them to discuss what is the most important thing for the school that we need to address in order to still as an eco school. That, that is very important. Usually when you do the environmental review, you try to look for the 10 topics that present on the website, but really you should choose only three, the maximum to work on. If we move to the next one, please. The action plan. After you do the environmental review, you need to do an action plan. In the action plan, what you do, you need to get three topics, as I said before, that you see you need to work on. The action plan need, then needs to go into the um, eco boards also or digital for people to know where you are working to work, to improve, yeah? Need to be start after you do the environmental review, but it doesn't need to be finished, but when they inspect you, you should show that you are making some type of progress in what you are doing that is fine for them. They are quite happy with that. What happened also is when you are doing the action plan, we need to think if you put, we're going to say a specific topic, we're going to say electricity. Electricity is a very hot topic that you must take it into account, especially that they do the campaign about a fortnight a switch off which is run by them. I mean, that is a, a one of the masks you should take. If you put in the action plan, for example, that you will start to do something like, you know, that the children will monitor that the, the light when the teacher are not in the class are switched off, the computer is not on, the interactive board is not on when nobody in the class, you can put in the action. If that happens constantly, that is reduced, the lights leave, left on or in, seen in the class, that one you can achieve. And you can put in there when you do that, that you took part in switch off for nights, which is a campaign done by them. And the port, I don't know if you know, the port is another website who you have a lot of them that link to the eco school. Also, you can do, if you decide to look upside in the environment, you can also have, for example, when you do in the class like science and you are looking into growing and the children are planting, that's another action. You may put an action to develop the outside area with planting or plant healthy food like, you know, carrot or salad or whatever, and you put in the action plan. So you did that, you can tick that mm -hmm. off so, that you did it. Laura, can I ask, how did the students decide which three topics or how did you help them decide which three? actually they had teacher hint for example at the moment i know the energy in the school is no good i need to we need to work toward that there is some topic you always we need to be working on energy you always need to be working because i guess every school has a problem with the the, the amount of money they are paying for heat and stuff like that the waste is another one which always it need it must because you have the food waste in the kitchen that the children doesn't eat and all that stuff. The paper symbol I told you before, for example, we don't waste any more plastic because we eliminate the laminator. We don't use the laminator anymore in the wall school. That thing is gone. It wasn't very popular, but it's gone. I mean, you, you come in with the children with this scene and you say to them, well, this is what's happening here. That, that is the way I do. I tell them what's happening and they will say, they will give you an idea of what to do it. And that is a way. Other way is, for example, what we do in the action plan, which can be also 
Uh, some time ago, some year ago, the lights were all, all the time on in the class. And mm -hmm. we decided with the children to talk about what we can do about it. And the children can up, they design a sign with this scene is uh, when don't, you go out, don't let me on. And with a stick in every class and the switch off for the lights, that means to remind you people that they did the class to switch off. And that's something that is evidence because the world is cool involved again in doing something like that. So, Lauren, can we can I share these slides with everyone that's attended? Because I know you've gone definitely, through steps in quite definitely. a lot of detail. Yeah, you um, can. Well, I wonder is because I, I know your next slide was on curriculum. So maybe we should. Cause yeah, curriculum. Yeah, you can lay the one because I shall link with the environment review. Yeah. So do you want to quickly talk about this one and then we'll go into an activity? To make yeah, sure that's fine. To do the, that. Yeah, that's a fine copy. The, the curriculum link, you have a lot of the curriculum link, you can do it, a lot of them, because you have, uh, for example, you have different um, campaign coming through the year that Equal School will tell you, and you can go with them. For example, you have different topics that you can do with your, the whole school. For example, you have the um, healthy living, for example, this is one. I don't know, our school, the children in PHA one, they gave free fruit. Um, they have, we, the children have water to drink. Um, for example, at lunchtime, depending where they have a lunchtime, that is another thing that should look into your school. If the food the children are having a lunchtime healthy, do your school have a healthy status? We are a healthy school status too which it helps to work all of that. The other thing you have, for example, um, Ocean Week, which is um, they have a live lesson. I put some website there you can check. The children go all involved because you go also with water, the cycle of water, and they link everything together. The children do activities through the school. For example, some of them will research about marine life. Some of them will research about the pollution in the ocean and how they affect the, um, the fishes, um, life in the ocean. You have the little children who will be creating some art with that. That means you have quite a lot of that. And with science, you have a lot that you can link to. With waste, it's a good thing to do because you have the children monitoring, for example, you have monitor children the lunch, the children how much they eat, how much is waste. We have the year six, we have one week which is waste week in March, that the children will waste the lose the, the, the waste that the children leave in the food, and we will share that with everybody. Yeah. So Laura, I've got to ask you, are you the person who's a who's researching and knowing about all of these different themed weeks or are other teachers or senior leaders uh, well, involved this, in helping? <laughs> what happens is, is, I can say that too, what happens is I have been doing for so long time that I am enrolled in all this scene. That means the person who always gets all this type of scene it will be me. <laughs> and I share with everybody. I share with the teacher and I share with the teachers. Um, also, we have a Google class, which is a good thing. And each class have an eco folder. And an eco folder, when I found anything new, I would put in there for the children to read and for the teachers to see too. I mean, the main thing is if you're going to do an eco council and you want a green flag, it's try to do things that you build the whole school interesting in what you are doing. You must. The head teacher is one of the most important people to help you to walk with you along the journey. And most important, as always, you make sure always that you try, when you finish your meeting, tell the children to go into the class and tell the teacher and to the friend what, what the meeting about. You speak to your colleague and you say, the children have a meeting, please give them five, ten minutes in the, at the end of the day for them to tell what happened in the meeting. Mm -hmm. that, that's it very important. Right. So the students are feeding back to management. Yeah. And important. the other way to get the whole school involved with a little bit hard sometimes, you can have an eco week. I know some people doesn't like eco week, 
Pachumia Nico Week is the way that you get the whole call involved. Everybody, nobody can say, oh, I'm busy, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Because it's linked with the curriculum, you do things, we go with the curriculum. I think you have a lot of evidence that you will need to put, to put in your application. And for that week, planning carefully, you can say, fill the gaps that you need to fill for your, for your green flag. Mm -hmm. And probably a, a lot more as well. Um, I'd really like to see what a, your plan was, and like all the different things we, on Eco Week. It'd be a nice thing to put up on the SunTrap website, I think. Uh, I, I will send you some. So, um, and I think we've got a hand up. Yeah, and just to add to all the fabulous um, references that Lara has made and all the hard work she's put in, also with our current assistant head when she was looking through the curriculum maps as well. So then that's been a good chance for it to become more embedded in curriculum work. So writing assessments based on stories with environmental themes so that it is meaningful um, through the the book week that's held by Bristol also had great sort of environmental themes that the children could tap into and write letters to the Queen and to Boris Johnson, which one of the children said, can we really do that? And then they were thrilled when they got responses as well. So kind of exercising their voices to take practical action um, yeah. is great. And it they're very welcome to write to the local authority as well and tell them what they think and what they'd like to they see. did they did in the past they did in the past um, a few years ago they did um they have a talk but it, it was no <laughs> it wasn't a big scene in the school yet they because then, yeah the other scene which i see very important is you're going to do all of this maybe to have a world school assembly assembly about climate change and maybe the way to do it is to have children investigating how it's happening. You know, it, it's a lot of information out there. It's a lot of friendly um, website for children. I put some of them already in the, the, this slide I did. And you can go there and you have a lot of other children research, mm -hmm. you know. But I see climate change is a big thing. And I see you get the world in, uh, school involved that they do understand what it's about because you hear, you hear, but do the children know really what is happening? Do the children know we really, especially the young children, you see? I think it, it is important. Mm. And thanks for sort of, yeah, saying that, Laura, and that brings me on to saying that sort of within my role to sort of encourage schools to take part in eco schools, I'm also able to come in and either just speak briefly in a teacher meeting if you feel the need for a bit of sort of encouragement um, or if there's opportunity I can run CPD sessions about climate education and eco schools program. Um, I can also help do assemblies or like a one-off lesson or session with the eco group perhaps once you've got your topics but you'd like to work out how to link that to something local or to, like you've got a specific Ideally, something that the students have come up with, they'd like to know more about. I might not know the answers, but maybe I can come in and help do that a session to sort of to talk about whatever that topic is and bring in the climate change angle as well. Um, I want to just put us into just a couple of breakout rooms for five minutes. Um, I hope this works. I'm reposting the link to the Jamboard. Um, at the top of the Jamboard, if you're able to get into it, which I think hmm, three people are, um, there's a f like a box with, sort of, when you open it, it probably says one out of six, one slash six. If you use the right arrow, you can move on. And there's, if you go across, there's different lesson examples for different topics. So I'm just gonna put us into two rooms. So room one, can think about the topic of energy and room two will have the topic of transport and I just want us to spend a few minutes like looking at the example lesson idea and maybe having a discussion about how you could bring that topic not just to your eco club but to your to a whole class um, 
and whether that's science, whether it's art, whether it's sort of cross curricular, but really looking to get people thinking about how. Um, and I think, uh, Laura, you're telling me about your eco monitors and having those people in the class as like spokespeople, I think is also an important way. Let me. So, so, so someone's so on the energy one that hopefully you can see on your screen. Um, an example sort of energy related lesson and the, the British Science Association have a whole pack of lessons relating to energy. Um, quite a lot of fun practical ones like this one of making an experiment around insulation and the temperature inside your home. And that's good for getting people thinking about double glazing and draft proofing and other kind of quite practical measures for how you keep the property warm. Um, another idea has gone up of mapping. Um, uh, yeah, to map which rooms they feel warm, coldest in. So you might recognise like maybe your hallway or the upstairs rooms are cold, drafty. Uh -huh. And then anyone, anyone got any thoughts on? what you would want to what you would do for a lesson that you wanted to touch on the subject of energy and how you could bring that as a school as a theme but into the classroom hi everyone sorry i didn't seem to get sent out of the meeting or couldn't rejoin so i've missed a little bit of what was said um, but yeah we um if we're talking about the topic energy in the slide that I can see just now, um, we got the children to sort of map to create their own um, visual images of where they thought energy was being most used, where was the warmest part um, of school. Uh, we were linked with a PhD student at the time. And although it was a little bit in the head for younger children, it, it still provided us with a really useful link. Um, to try to work out how do we take our buildings and um, try to improve our energy usage. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I really like that idea because I can easily take that home and do it in their own home after doing it at school. Yeah. I think my biggest frustration on the energy one is, um, and I don't know how Lara feels on lower side, is we've been talking about this for a long time, but trying to embed like the good habits within the rooms, um, that seems to still be a bit of a struggle. Are you trying, I, saw, I missed a few words, are you trying to do what? Sort of embed good habits, you know, the boards are switched off, the clients are switched off, the small actions that make the big difference. Um, but the children see us doing as adults and they replicate themselves. Yes. Uh, Laura, we've got you back. I'm so sorry. Um, yes, I was off. <laughs> I prefer Zoom to Teams. It does seem to work more smoothly for group meetings. Um, we were just having um, a look at some of the ideas that got put up, and hopefully uh, you can see my screen being shared at the moment with some of the suggestions. Um, I'm just hearing is a frustration about energy, is habits. I guess that's where the idea of having a class monitor that changes periodically. And I think, Laura, you were saying earlier that you have an eco monitor per class, but they're not necessarily the people in the eco committee. No. It's of making sure people get involved. Yeah, the, the idea is that every child in the class has an opportunity to be a monitor because that's the way you involve everybody in, in doing it. Because really, the, the, the idea is that the whole school is involved. It's just not the ICI committee. It's everybody do a little bit and learn. Yeah, that's really important and to give people that sense of responsibility. Um, so it's have. Um, I know it's sort of gone a little bit scrambled and um, but as people, anyone got questions, um, even if they're questions I can't answer right now, that's useful because I can then go away and find out the right answers for you. Yeah, Alexandra. Um, I was wondering where we can find the application form for the green flag. So I th that's that is one slightly weird thing because I'm not with a school. I've not been able to actually 
create a sort of profile and log in. But again, the eco schools are going to try and do that for local authorities, but it doesn't exist. Um, yeah. I believe that once you're in there, once you're working through the steps, it will be like um, available from the beginning of summer term. Okay. Fill in. You, you, you can enroll now, actually, I think. I think you can enroll now and you're starting to work toward the scene because they will ask you the first thing to do is the, um, the environmental review. That's the first thing you need to do and you need to be starting to download scene in the website. Mm. Sorry, which website do I go on? Eco school. Eco, -school. Eco schools. Okay. Eco schools, yeah. All right, Went to thank Eco you. school, and all the information you need is in there, and it's very clear and easy to follow too. Thank you very much. Um, so, and Jenny asked about nursery. Well, there is a um, an early years yes sort of strand, mm -hmm. so, and they're on the Eco schools website, and they they go through the seven mm -hmm. steps and have recommendations for. Yeah, I, I saw her question. The nursery also get involved. Maybe doesn't come into us, but the teacher and nursery do get the children like to do the big tidy up. You know, they they, they do planting in the garden. Uh, they do healthy snack. They talk through. I mean, the nursery children do. The, in our school, they get involved. If we do a campaign about switch off, the children will have a talk. The teacher will have a talk with the children about it. But instead, they maybe have a monitor. You have the whole nursery involved. All the children, you speak to all of them about what you are doing. And the little children are very good in getting involved and remember the same better than us as an adult, to be honest with you. I think you can do with nursery, but it will be a little bit different than a primary school. But if you involve the little one, they, they, they get really excited and they are very, very much, you know, part of the team. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure, Jenny, you'll be able to go through those steps without, pro without any problem, especially if you're doing so much outside already. The the task really for you will be making sure that the sort of the evidence in a display that, that the sort of the eco group are talking to others about it um, and that you've just followed those steps. But I'm sure with sort of the ideas you've shared with me before, you won't have any problems kind of going through those steps. Um, and in terms of, you sort of say part of a pilot, so I'm just going to wrap up, but essentially as many schools in the borough are sort of, sort of welcomed and encouraged to do the eco schools programme this year. But I know with COVID, quite a few eco schools have sort of fizzled out and people are just getting going again this year. So. And this is sort of my period as well to work out how we can best support schools to go through it. Next year, it's going to be really like, come on, how many schools in Wolf and Forest can we get to achieve that green flag? We'll really push for it then. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, if, do let me know if there's any sort of lessons or teacher sessions I can come along to to support and kind of encourage the school because that, that other aspect was sort of working with like what do the students want to learn about, what do the teachers need? And also from a sort of governance level, we're sort of supporting something called the Greener Governance campaign and trying to get uh, schools to have a working group at leadership level working on this and to make sure that the really hard working eco lead teachers aren't left doing this by themselves and it actually becomes part of a long term vision and strategy. So if there are, if any of your schools, if you think your school leadership would like to take part in this green governance campaign and have support from myself in sort of facilitating the initial meetings, let me know because I'm looking for a pilot of about two to three primary schools, two to three secondary schools. The rest of this academic year, we, we won't get as far as having a strategy, but at least we'll kind of get the group together and start talking about what that looks like next year as well for them to properly have a school climate action plan. Um, so that's sort of the other level of work we're trying to implement. So yeah, if you think your schools would be interested, um, do you put me in touch with the relevant teacher and I can start, I can try and have that meeting to get it, get it, get the ball rolling essentially. And then so 
the next teach me in spring two we're doing in person at mission grove um school so hopefully that will be able to be a bit more networky as well and, and have more more time to chat and hear what other schools are doing um, particularly around bringing arts and into environmental projects this is sort of the angle we're taking for that one um, but any other ideas questions please just sort of feed them back to to me um, and we'll sort of adapt <laughs> and hopefully offer what the, what it is that the teachers are looking for um, and maybe summer term we'll do one up at sun trap so you will get to see the beautiful uh sun trap residential and lodge that we've got here great uh, our school have been in sun trap every year year two until before the um, the lockdown we usually want to do team building in the um, in the forest where it was um it was a teacher who had been there for many, many years. I don't know, Ridley or something like that is her name. Kelly or Kelly, something she, like that? Kerry Rollinson, yes. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Still yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she she the one who had been with us more of the time where we have been there, her and another teacher. But we take the year two until okay. before the, uh, the pandemic, we have been taking them there in autumn term always. And it is a... Uh, Beautiful place, a really great thing for the children to go and do and see. Mm, useful feedback. Thanks, Dan. I will uh, that. Uh, uh, one thing I want to say in the, uh, in the end is uh, I know a lot of the school don't have grounds at all. They don't have grass, they don't have anything. Never afraid to use bucket for whatever you have to plant it because uh, the children absolutely love to do that. And that one of the things that being an eco school is important to show the children. The first year I did planting, I did because I didn't have nothing prepared, we plant potatoes in a bucket. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, the children were absolutely excited to see the potato. They couldn't believe how many potatoes coming from the bucket. I mean, never scared if you don't have ground to start from scratch and experiment. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong until you try. That is a great final message. Thank you, Laura.